What would you do if your pastor said this? I need you. I need you to deal. I need you to be dealing with millions. Can y'all receive that? Can y'all go listen? Look at your neighbor. Tell him I'm sick of being around broke folk. Now you better come on. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace. Welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub, and today. You know we gotta talk about it. Can we talk for a minute? The Bible says. No, 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 no. I'm tired of the church. I be look, man. I really, I really be trying to leave William Murphy alone, but he be making it hard. Every time I try to leave, something keeps pulling me back, me back. I told myself I wasn't going to listen to his recent sermon, and I, I, I failed. It showed up in the feed and I said, you know what, let me check it out. Surely if this sermon can't be bad, right? It's it's the week after Easter. Well, he always he never disappoints. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. So let's get into this first clip here. This this is why I got up and got dressed for this moment right here, right now. Come on, mama. I need somebody to help me praise God. Can y'all? Oh, so. He's been doing his normal begging for members, right? He has to beg for members every sermon. Um, how dare you? And so there actually was no sermon. Oddly enough, there was no sermon. As a matter of fact, he was like, yeah, if you want a sermon, come back next week. It's <laughs> like, how are you not going to preach a sermon? It was just like a music and him doing inviting them to become a member of his church. But he said something interesting that I was just like. Boy, no way. You know, you know, I had to hit him with that. Give me like the sound of Jubilee. Y'all got me like, like that. Come on, let get play something happy. <laughs> He's, yeah, get the music right. C control their their emotions, right? Come on, come on. Come on, y'all know what time it is. Y'all, come on. Play something happy that make the people want to walk. <laughs> come on. Y'all help me praise God for this family coming to the altar. Run. Now listen, listen, this this the last call for alcohol. No, 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 no. God trying to get you some new wine, but you still playing. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I need you to look at somebody and say, last call for alcohol. Who am I waiting on over here? So he made the altar call a last call for alcohol. <laughs> like, how, bro, how are you comparing that? What in the T-Pain is going on? No, 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 no. What is... I'm tired of the church. Man, I mean, does he does he always have the most sinful references and analogies he can think of? But this actually wasn't the worst part of the sermon. Or I say sermon service. Uh, believe it or not, it, it actually wasn't. This was the worst part because he got into the issue. Come on, you know what's about the money. Let's get into it. Now listen, this uh, well, T, let's do this real quick. Come on, you come and get them. Y'all gonna come right up here to the balcony. We got some information we want to give you. Just come on and take them now, and uh, or, or whoever's gonna take them, T, let them give them instructions to go now. Uh, this is what this is what I what I, I need to put on your heart and I just want you to obey God. I need 1,300 people. I need, thir say 1,300. 1300. Say it one more time, 1,300. 1300. That's, that's 1,300. But notice he's saying, I need you to obey God. Now, none of, none of what he's about to say is scripture, but guess what the 1,300 have to do? I need cash now. Call JG Wentworth 877 Cash Now. Oh, yeah, it is bread in the pocket gospel time. It is JG Wentworth gospel. So let's let's hear the outlandish uh, 
command that he he not God is uh, asking for or demanding. Somebody else is walking to the altar, y'all. Welcome home, mama. Welcome home. I need 1,300 people to come to church next week with an over and above seed of $100. He's, he, he can hear a pin drop in that room after that. Is this finna get funky in here? Because I'm finna use a bunch of adjectives. Gaslight. Like, I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. Yeah, he got quiet. So 1,300 people. Hold on, let me make sure I heard it right. You know, I don't want to straw man the man. This week, with an over and above seed of one hundred dollars. Yeah, so uh, um, uh, over and above seed of a hundred dollars, right? Quick maths. How much is that in the chat? Put it in the chat if you got that quick math, right? Uh, but yeah, so not just a giving, an over and above. What's an over and above giving? I mean. Obviously, it's above nor what you would normally give or what you even could give. And one of the things you see with prosperity preachers and uh, charlatans like William Murphy is they denigrate the poor often. The very people they demanding to give this, they denigrate them and they take advantage of the poor. Uh, I think there is many parallels in scriptures. We'll get to one in a second. But let me let, let you hear this because you're going to be. I would say you would be shocked, but it's part of the course for William Murphy. Did you hear me? <sighs> Unfortunately, they did. 1,300 people to come to church next week with an, oh, you know what over and above means? Yeah. It's not your tithe. It's not your regular offering. It's an over. Yeah. So not your tithe, not your regular. So now this service, you got to give three offerings. So, and one of those offerings has to be a hundred, right? So. If your tithes is normally 50 and then your offerings are normally 50, well, you have to give two hundred dollars. So when he says it over and above, yeah, it's something you normally can't give. No, 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 no. This is terrible. This is terrible, but it's going to get worse. You know, it's going to get worse. And above C, you're not going to pull it from your tithe. You're not going to. It's going to be an over and above C. If you will just heed the voice of your pastor. Next. Wait a second. I thought it was the voice of God. I thought you said this was God. Obey God. So see, a lot of these pastors, they get God and can, God and them confused quite often. You know, it's, it's quite sad. This week, we will reach our goal of one million dollars. If you do that. Do, do me a favor. Lay your hand on your neighbor. Say same grace, same grace. Sir, what did I tell you? Get your hands off me! Don't you touch me. <laughs> Look, you ain't gonna be touching me like that, man. Same grace. Some of y'all don't even know what y'all saying. Yeah, they but don't. But what you're saying is that your conversations about money after next week will be in the millions. So he say, hey, look, if you... um comply obey the prophet i mean god i mean the prophet which whichever one he keeps saying it is if you obey one of them then their conversation they're going to be discussing millions in their regular flow if you don't believe me watch he's about to elaborate on this so again this is the classic if you give me a little just a hundred dollars god will make you a millionaire how convenient doesn't that sound like a great deal out of life <laughs> Y'all can't even receive that. I'm, of I'm, course not. <laughs> look at somebody and tell them after next week, my conversations won't be in the thousands. Ne after next week, my conversations, my contracts, my business won't won't be six fig. Some of y'all just I'm just believing God for six figures. God say that ain't enough. You hear the person in the background? That ain't enough. Yeah, because you're greedy. No, 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 no. You're greedy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Yeah, yeah, y'all on that J.G. Wentworth. cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth. 877-CASH-NOW. He said, I needs my money. I need you. <laughs> ain't enough. I need, you to I need you to be dealing with millions. 
Can y'all receive that? Can y'all don't listen? Look at your neighbor. Tell him I'm sick of being around broke folk. Now you better come on. No, 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 no. What? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? What? Um, how dare you? So he's sick around being around broke folk. You know, uh, could you actually expect a pastor to properly uh, counsel poor people when he? doesn't like being around poor people hey his own words he's sick around being with poor people can we talk for a minute the bible says so let's get into the bible what does it say about the poor that he despises so much i mean the bible even says a lot about that right um my goodness i can't believe this guy said that notice what james 2 says my brothers show no partiality as you hold the faith in our lord jesus christ the lord of glory for if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in. And if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place where you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down at my feet. Yeah, yeah. This is this is how you get treated in William Murphy's church. Right. Because he's 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 sick, of, sick, of, sick being around poor people. Right. He don't he don't want to be around you. He don't want to hang around with you. And this is classic text on showing partiality, showing favor to the rich man over to the poor because you get the poor. The rich man has something you want. Right. But keep reading. It says, verse four, have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judged with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God showed um, chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? My goodness, but you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you in the court? Are they th not the ones who blaspheme the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. This see William Murphy, this this text applies to you because you are a partial man. You are a very partial man. You've made it known who you would rather spend your time with, who you would rather uh, show favor to. Now, you know, I know if you I'm sure you pressed him, he's like, ah, I was joking out of the out of the out of the mouth, the heart, out, out of the mouth, the heart speaks. Right. And so you have made it very clear on what you desire. So let's let's keep paying because it's actually going to get worse if you can believe it or not. They're laughing. What are y'all laughing about? I'm I'm tired of being around people. Every time we go somewhere, I got to pay. How about this? Make them a meal. You don't have to. And let me just say this to balance this out. Yeah, the church isn't handouts just for people who don't want to work and want to be lazy. That's not what I'm arguing for. I'm not saying he should just help. He should just give people just money. Right. No, we want to see them be uh able to stand on their own two feet if they can then if they've done everything they can then we help them out so we're, so the church isn't just this um social club to help people who don't want to work no that's not what i'm saying but clearly this the attitude he he don't care if they can <laughs> he again he don't want to be around the poor at all somebody make some noise if you want some friends y'all got to fight over the bill some of y'all can't, you can't even wrap your mind around that. Just let me. Yeah, he, you just want only friends that have the same financial class status as you. Right. I mean, but this isn't the this isn't even practical to, to, to the church in the Bible's day or today. Everybody knows people who have a multitude of different uh, financial statuses in the church. And imagine only speaking to people that have money in you. Someone comes up and you're like, oh, <laughs> like that snobbery attitude. But again, William Murphy has expressed this before. He said in sermons in the past, right? It's like his time is money. You want me hanging around him? It's going to cost you something. Hey, when I when I go places, the kind of company I keep when I go places at the I have to be strategic about it because the kind of people I hang around, they'll walk in the door and tell the people. Here's my Amex. Notice the people he's hanging around with. He don't hang with you poor people. If you ain't got no Amex. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. If you don't got no Amex, 
he 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 ain't you not hanging around with William Murphy. So this should let you know if the poor people in the church should have took this as an insult, but they're so money hungry themselves rather than saying, um, how dare you? They want it. They want the bread in their pocket, too. That's the sad part of all this is they're actually getting fleeced and gas. Yes, right. Right. I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. But they're so blind, they can't even see it. So we looking like, where's the bill? They like, oh, it's paid for. Like, really? That's what you're doing? So coming in the door, I come in with my Amex like, don't get a bill to nobody. I'm paying for this. I did. Yeah, yeah. That's all the church funds. <laughs> He's spending on his rich friends. Yeah, yeah. He, he letting y'all know what he doing. No, 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 no. He letting y'all know what he doing. And they, and they, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Pastor, speak. Pastor, speak. Speak, Pastor. Like a bad sermon. Heresy's there. Look at somebody say, them the kind of friends God want me to have. Not the kind of friends be like, oh, I left my wallet. You don't even carry a wallet. What you just lying? Imagine the worst thing you having to pay for someone's meal when you got more than enough. See, see, this is the same. This when he talked about a few sermons, you know, about having that overflow blessing. Yeah, this is who it's for to help this person. And you up there complaining about it. <laughs> Imagine making millions and then having to pay for twenty dollars for somebody's meal. Let's say, you know, you, you you got a little more expensive taste, $40 for somebody's meals. You're stingy, too. You're stingy. Look, man, I, I, I wouldn't mind paying for somebody's meal. I'm like, yeah, bro, I got you. <laughs> like, oh, man, this, this is wild that he's saying this. this. But this is this is their pastor. You got a million dollars you trying to raise, but you get to spend 40 on a church member that you begging for and demanding they give 100. <laughs> they getting scammed. Look at somebody say, we talking millions after this. We're talking millions. We're talking millions after this. We're getting ready. Somebody say, well, what does a church need with a million dollars? It's Great a bunch question. of hurting and homeless and helpless people around this community. And we need money to help them. You don't need a million dollars to feed the homeless. I mean, Jane, the, the people in the Bible were doing it. You know, the New Testament church wasn't largely uh, financially well off and yet. They were able to do it. You don't need a, a millions of dollars to feed people, you know. And then, like I said, you won't even do it for the own members in the church. So you're going to do it for people outside the church, but not even your own peoples? Man, dang. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. That's cold, man. They up there paying your lights. Turn off the lights. Yeah, turn the lights off. Turn the lights off. No, we know what that money's going for. Them LED lights back there. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the big sign of you in the background. That new carpet you talked about. That's where all the money's going. Majorly. <laughs> Renovations on the church. As a matter of fact, you talked about getting breaking ground on a, on a new church building, which is fine. But don't act all holier than now. Now talking about, oh, it's to feed the homeless. Yeah, Judas. Yeah, Judas. We're getting ready to build Dream Center City. I got to get you out of here. We're getting ready to build Dream Center City. And uh, we need money to jumpstart that. It's going to cost us, I think, around $75,000 just to be able to get a, a check on what we want to do on the land. It's going to cost us seventy five grand. we think, just to say, yeah, y'all can do that. Another couple of hundred thousand dollars to get somebody to draw it up. Watch this, but that's all we gonna pay for. Y'all not saying what I'm saying, y'all. Look at somebody and say, our vision, their money. Their company, their price. No, 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 no. <laughs> he gonna make demands on what they gonna spend. Okay. Our vision, their money. So if, if just 1,300 of you will obey the voice of your prophet next week and just come with an over and above. Some of you are going to do it during the course of this week when you go on church center. Uh, just put uh, Super Sunday. Just Super Sunday or Again C. Just as a matter of fact, say Again C because we, we miss Super Sunday. But this is an Again C. They got to they gotta make up for the offering they missed. Oh my goodness. Say that again, see. So everybody say it again, see. 
If your neighbor not saying nothing, it's because they're not going to participate. Don't sit next to them next week. Tell them this row is for, for givers only. You got to. No, 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 no. Okay, so <laughs> if they don't give, they're not allowed to sit on the pew now? They gonna just be sitting on the ground. What 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 is going on, man? I got bread in my pocket. 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 Wait a minute. Who are you? But he ain't done scamming them. But wait, there's more. They're gonna be like, he say you can't come to church if you don't give. No, you didn't say that. We're going to be fair. You know, we don't want a straw man you. Do you want to build a straw man? No, we don't want a straw man you, sir. You said they can come to church, but they can't sit on the pew. <laughs> they got to have to sit on the stall in the back. They got the overflow room, right? They can't sit at the pew with the the, the given people. Now, doesn't that actually contradict what uh, James too talked about showing partiality? My goodness. And, and 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 again, it's not that they're not giving. They're not giving the overflow. So they could be giving their tithes and their offering according to how you guys do it. Now, you know, I, I, I just say, hey, give freely, as the Bible says, Second Corinthians chapter eight and chapter nine. But nevertheless, if they don't give the third offering, you don't want them sitting on the pew. My goodness. Talk about that's like I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. That ain't what I said. I said you can't sit next to me. Yeah, old Miss Pew. <laughs> hey man, I don't let broke folks, stingy folks, sit close to me. No, 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 no. What? <laughs> like a, this man? Look, I have never seen in a more explicit denial of James chapter two when it comes to the poor. Yeah, he don't let poor people sit next to him. So he can't counsel poor people because, right? Yeah, obviously, I have to sit next to them to counsel them. I mean, this guy is 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 one of the worst. He is literally one of the worst. What? What? Imagine being poor listening to this. Like, like I said, they're so blind, though. They can't see. He's about that J.G. Wentworth gospel. Come, tell your neighbor, scoot over some. I need some. I need some space. Listen, this week, I got to let you go. Terrible, terrible, terrible Charles Barkley style. Uh, let me let me let me read to you one more verse. Uh. My goodness, this man is money hungry, but because James speaks of this attitude as well in James chapter two as well, verse 15 through 16, he says, if a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, you know, those poor people he doesn't want to sit, sit by. And one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, or even worse, give us more money that you don't even have to give uh, without giving them the things needed for the body. What good is that? Yeah. The people he's like, man, he don't want to pay for the meal. He is in direct violation of this passage, First Timothy 6, it says, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the path and pierced themselves with many pangs. This is very evidently clear of William Murphy. And I pray that um, those in his church would stumble across this video and have their eyes awakened. That this man doesn't care for their soul. He doesn't care for them. He wants what's in their wallet. This is a capital one preacher. This is a capital one preacher all the way. And as, as many of my friends have been saying, we've been they come up with this phrase, right? Atlanta must be stopped. Or as I say, AT hell, go and put AT hell in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Till the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below. Hey,